Right, this is the part two video of the um, machining of my milling spindle housing. And you can see here that it's um, been finished off. Um, I didn't show the machining ops on this end because uh, all those ops are virtually the same process as the first end and it would just be a repeat of that. But I would just like to show newcomers to lathe work a uh, very important um, subject um, when you're machining hollow bar or tube. Um, what you need to make up to actually stop this from being ripped out of the jaws when machining. So what you need to do uh, with hollow bar or tube, you make up a bush or a bung, very close fitting to the already machined end or whatever and that goes inside the bore um, when it goes into the jaws you can actually tighten it up and it will um, just uh, lock that down if there's any movement it'll uh, grip or push it onto the bung and it'll be absolutely solid um, just like an ordinary billet so it actually takes out the spring of the material um, it actually pushes the um, diameter in a bit and actually locks it onto that um, bung um, it also has a, another um, brilliant use, um, it actually stops um, squashing the bore and ruining an already machined uh, diameter. And this is a really important thing for safety, um, if you didn't have one of these and you just put that into the jaws tightened up, um, no matter what the wall thickness there um, if it was just a very small hole through it would be okay maybe but um, this wall thickness here is over a hundred thou and I guarantee that if I put that into the jaws tightened it up and started machining it would actually get ripped out of that chuck and in my lifetime I've seen that happen um, quite a few times when I've been lax and thought I'd actually get away with not making a bung or bush up um, I had um, really nice components, halfway made or whatever, and then all of a sudden it gets ripped out of the jaws and completely ruined. And on my last video, a uh, few people in the comments have asked why I wasn't using a four jaw chuck um, to actually hold this long bar. Um, the reason for that is because I have only got this um, four jaw uh, five inch chuck. Um, I'd have to have the jaws around um, in this position for holding and in doing so I'd only have 8mm of holding depth um, on that long billet. On the three jaw chuck I have 26mm and I consider that to be much safer. And I would have used a four jaw chuck if I had one the same size as this. Um, it would have the length then to hold it and it would obviously be much safer. And that's because it's less um, liable to actually twist out of a four jaw chuck um, like it um, tends to do with the three jaw type. And I got away with um, using this one to make this component just by being very careful and taking really light cuts. It took a long time to make this, um, probably a few hours, but um, I'm pleased with the results and I actually managed to get away with it using this three jaw chuck. But I will be buying one um, of a similar size to this in four jaw soon. Another thing about bungs or bushes or whatever you like to call them, um, I like to make mine with a concentric drilled hole uh, through them and that's because um, like with this one here um, I actually wanted to machine a little bit more um, off this shoulder when I finished it um, to make it a little bit narrower. So what I did is I put this um, in the jaws uh, without a bung in the end here and actually very lightly um, tighten the jaws onto that so it didn't squash it in any way. I put the bush in this end here and then I used a live center in the end there to hold it while I machined that shoulder off a bit and also um, gave the um, diameter a bit of a polish. 
Plus, if you're actually machining um, into a cylinder with a closed end, when you push the um, bush in there, that allows the air to come out and it's also easier to actually take them out at the end. And if I make a bush uh, for a component like this, um, after use I actually keep it in a box of bushes and um, then in the future if I make another component the same I can use it again. Um, you can use it like I say just for uh, live centres. Um, you can use them for um, plug gauges to see the uh, diameter of a bore or whatever. So they have um, all different brilliant uses. You can actually write the size on them as well to make it easier. And like I say, I've got a whole collection of these uh, for making different components in the future. Plus another great use I forgot to mention, um, if you're making a component like this with bearings, you can actually use the um, bush to push the um, outer bearing part into the component and press it home nice and square. Um, they have great different uses like that. Right, so I've turned the diameter to fit the motor clamp and that one fits nicely. Um, incidentally, if you buy one of these, make sure you um, debur it on the inside first, uh, polish it up by hand with a bit of wet and dry and I um, deburred all the outside on the buffing wheel um, to make it nice. Um, I actually made this diameter 10 thou larger than the motor that this clamp um, was meant to fit. It does actually fit the motor nicely. When it's clamped up it locks solid, uh, but this one, like I say, is 10 thou um, larger in diameter, which is better and that's a really nice fit and I just have um, just over three quarters of a thou um, taper from this end to this end which isn't bad at all and to finish off I machined a couple of um, decorative grooves I put it in the jaws uh, this way again I lightly nipped it up on the diameter again so it doesn't squash it I put the bush in this end here with the live centre in it and then I carefully machined these two grooves here. I um, sprayed it with red paint and then when it's dry um, I put it back in the lathe again like this and polished the diameter to leave the red paint in those grooves and make it look really nice. Right, so the outer part of the bearing is pushed home both ends and to check um, that they're nice and square you can actually measure with a depth mic all the way round and see that it's um, exactly the same reading. Um, these are perfect. I have the gap in there um, if I ever want to make a tool to push the uh, bearing part out again and it's all turned out really nice. Now the inner bearing is a little bit loose on the shaft, it's meant to be an interference fit and um, don't worry about that, you can actually put a smear of Loctite 638 around the diamond here after you've cleaned it with acetone or whatever and then push that home and that'll be on there rock solid and won't come off um, unless it was heated up to quite a high temperature. I think it's um, very slightly tapered on the shaft because it's um, tighter at the back, um, but that's great. I've got enough room as well uh, from the front face so that I can actually put a cover on there and um, then it won't actually rub the front of the bearing so that's going to be good for keeping a uh, swarf out of the bearing or whatever. 
and I'm actually really pleased with that the way it's turned out. So now I'm just waiting for some components and materials to arrive to be able to make up the threaded um, end for preload adjustment and this will also incorporate the shaft for the pulley drive. So I'll have to do a video later today to show how I do this.